Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at some of the ways that you can use the new skin color feature to change your character's skin color and introduce a few new details available in Character Creator 4. This is a non-destructive adjustment via the shader that allows you to change the color of your character's skin without modifying the raw materials or textures. All it takes is a few quick adjustments of your character's skin color and morphs to completely change the appearance of your character from one ethnicity to another. You can use endless combinations of skin presets in your shader settings with various unique morph sliders to drastically alter the appearance of your character in seconds. In this first scenario, I'm going to demonstrate how to easily change the color of your character's skin naturally. First, you want to ensure that you have your character's head selected from the material list in the materials tab. We then want to go down to the shader settings and open up the skin color section, then enable the activate skin color checkbox. We also want to go into the Color Adjustment subsection and activate that as well. Here you'll find four basic skin tone presets, based on realistic skin colors. You'll generally want to start with one of these presets and customize it further. Let's start off with a light skin tone as a base. It may look a little too pale to start, so you can proceed to increase the values of the red, yellow and black sliders in combination. Notice that the changes will be very subtle and natural. There's also a lumination parameter that has a stronger effect on the brightness of the overall skin tone. Be aware that if the value here is too high, it will wash out the details of your character's face. Even though your character has different UV maps for different parts of the body, we can still adjust the skin color for the whole body simultaneously, as the shader is set to modify multiple materials. Notice that any parameter change I make here will affect the entire body of my character. In this case, you can see a specialized character with high contrast skin and a great deal of makeup. In a scenario like this where the base skin color is quite extreme, you can use the effective color range option to determine what shades of color on the face are changed the most. Notice that at first if we change the color presets, that the changes remain fairly in sync with the other shades on the face, despite slight changes. This is because the effective color range is set to a more skin tone shade, which limits the level of color change to achieve more realistic blending. If we click on that color swatch and adjust the value, you'll notice that the skin toned areas of the face can be changed to more unique colors, yet everything blends together harmoniously. Let's see how it looks by starting with a dark skin tone preset. You'll notice if we start with this, we can achieve much more saturated shades as the colors accumulate on top of the natural skin color preset. You can play around with the effective color range to achieve a wide range of colors that still blend in nicely and don't look too outlandish. Let's take a look now at how you can use a blend map in combination with Headshot. You may notice that under the Textures subsection of Shader Settings, there is a Blend RGB Map channel. Let's load a simple map in there that has yellow war paint on the cheeks and chin. Under Skin Color, you'll find another subsection for Blend Map, and an option to enable it. Here you can adjust the blend strength to determine how much of the blend map you added is visible. If we delete that, we can also use a blend color. Notice that it will subtly blend into the character skin base, making it slightly darker and dulling out the freckles a bit. This color is also used for the effective color range as well. Let's take a look at another blending scenario, this time from Headshot. What I'm doing here is loading in an image of this elderly Asian man and using the old facial preset to give him some wrinkles on the base material. Once it has been generated, you can see that the initial result is decent, however there are some high contrast areas that just don't seem to naturally blend into the character's head very well. This can be common with headshot characters due to uneven lighting and shadows in the source image. Here we can follow the same blend color procedure as in the last example, and boost up the blend strength. Once we do, you'll see that it lightens the overly darkened areas of the face, blending them in more nicely for a more consistent look. You can also take a look at the side view to see how well it works in combination with Headshot to get a seamless blend between the 2D image source and the materials generated by Character Creator. This process allows us to quickly and easily create high quality custom heads from a single 2D image. Finally, let's briefly take a look at how to export to both iClone and other 3D programs. Since iClone and Character Creator share the same shader technology, it's easy to export to iClone without any additional conversion needed. Simply click on the Export to iClone button on the toolbar, and that's it. You have a fully rigged character that you can animate in a matter of seconds. 
If you want to export to other 3D software, you'll need to bake the textures before you do so. For example, let's export this character to FBX format and choose a Blender Target Tool preset. Down at the bottom of the export window, you'll want to make sure that you allow the export to bake the diffuse map from the skin color. Once you do that and import your character into Blender using our add-on tool, you'll have the option to go into shading mode in Blender and customize any of the shader nodes that transferred over in more detail. That's about it for this tutorial guys. Hopefully you learned a lot, and as always be sure to check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com. I'll see you in the next video.